In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a tripod to lift your giant pumpkin. You are going to need the following materials to make this. Three 16 foot four by fours, a one half inch by 12 inch carriage bolt, along with two nuts and two washers. An alternative would be some rebar, but that might be kind of sketchy. Nine feet of chain with a grab hook on one end. This wraps around the 4x4s on the top of the tripod so that you can attach the chain hoist. Our chain in the video is 80 inches and it's a bit too short. It would be a lot easier if it were longer, which is why I say to get 9 feet. Make sure it is rated to hold at least the weight of your pumpkin. Two large tractor clevises. I got mine at Tractor Supply Company. Make sure it is big enough to clip over three layers of your chain. Three pieces of rebar to secure each 4x4 once the tripod is up. Pumpkin strap lifter or lifting ring. I got mine at PNP Seeds, but I can't find it online anymore. Basically, it was a bunch of seatbelt straps that were designed to wrap along the pumpkin vertically, and then there was a strap on the bottom to cinch it. There are a few giant pumpkin growers that sell their own pumpkin lifting rings, which would be a good alternative. Two ton chain hoist, or higher if you're really good. Our original chain hoist was from Harbor Freight. One time when lifting a pumpkin, it seized up on us, so I got a higher quality one to avoid that annoying problem in the future. Do not go cheap on your chain hoist. If you want links to some of these items, I have put it in the description. The first thing you need to do is cut the 4x4s and drill holes so that you can connect them together. This is crucial because it allows you to move the tripod into the position that you need to above the pumpkin so that you can lift it. This is what the final result will look like when you put it all together. So when I actually made my line, I measured 1.75 inches, six inches down, drew a line and cut. So anything around that ballpark should work fine because it's worked fine for me. The next thing you wanna do is drill your holes. So to hook up my tripod, I use a carriage bolt and the carriage bolt I use is one half inch by 12 inches long. That's just the biggest one that I could find at Lowe's. Um, if you can find something bigger, I would assume that's better because it can hold more weight. So I drill based on the size of that. Some people also use rebar. It's a personal choice. Uh, I found that rebar bends a little bit more and is kind of sketchy, but totally up to you. I am not an engineer and do not know weight limits of all this stuff. So remember when you're drilling your hole, this one's gonna go perpendicular, but these you don't want to go perpendicular because this is actually gonna be rotated. So when I drill my hole, I'm actually gonna have these in position. So here you can see the very important difference. So this one, I drilled a hole four inches down, which is right about here, but four inches down here is actually gonna come out here, which is less than four inches. So you kinda gotta use I'm sure there's an engineering way to do it, but I just use my eye. So line it up. You have your one four inches here, which means it's going to meet up four inches around here. Versus if you lined it up down here, it's going to come out right at the top. So move it up where it's going to meet up. So you got your four inches down here. You want to line it up with the four inches here and then drill it, as opposed to this one, which isn't lined up. You don't wanna go perpendicular, it's not gonna work. If you want some specific numbers to help guide you, I'll show you what my measurements are. I kinda made these up uh, as I went along. If you know someone who's an engineer, you might wanna have them help you out and possibly give you something better, but again, this has worked great. Uh, my biggest pumpkin is 1593 pounds and it lifted it up easy without even any sketchiness at all. So the hole here, the center of the hole is about four inches down. If you look at the side ones on the flat side, actually this one's about four and a half inches down. On this side that's cut, it's about 3.75 inches. Let's just see what the other side is. On this side, again, yep, 3.75 inches. Phew. And on this side, 4.5 inches. 
Now to connect this tripod together, you're either going to use a bolt or you're going to use a piece of rebar. We've used rebar in the past and it bends a lot and it's kind of sketchy, but I've seen lots of growers do it and we've done it ourselves and it probably will work just fine. I don't know the actual weight limits of it when it's bending, but it's worked so far. So you're just going to put the bolt through all the holes. Assuming your holes are lined up, it should be fairly easy. You can wiggle things around as needed. Oops, I actually forgot my washer. I'm gonna put a washer on. Okay, put another washer on. And secure it with a nut. You want it a little loose to give it some forgiveness to move around. You don't want it too, too tight because it'll be, actually be hard to lift up. So definitely give it a little bit of flexibility so you can adjust things without it causing issues. But you don't want it too loose, obviously, because you don't want things moving around when you're lifting a 1,500 pound pumpkin. Next, you want to set up your tripod around the pumpkin. You can see the bare spot in the grass. That's where my pumpkin was. And the position of this tripod is nearly perfect to get it to line up over the pumpkin. You want to make sure the middle 4x4 four four is the one on the far end because that middle 4x4 four four is the one that you're going to be lifting up. Now, technically, you can use any side of the tripod to drive your vehicle under. I like using the setup we have now where the way you're facing is where the truck is coming from. I just find it easier that that middle 4x4 four four is the one that you lift up and that width of the two 4x4s four facing you are always going to be the same. You have to be very careful when you're lifting it because you need the width of the 4x4s four in front of you to be wide enough at the highest point of where your truck is going to be but you also don't want to have the tripod too low because then the pumpkin won't lift high enough to get into your truck. I've made this mistake a few times. We tried to have a wider base and then it turns out the pumpkin's not lifted high enough. So then we have to lower everything, redo the tripod and do it all again. The other issue you can have is that the tripod is too narrow and you can't even get the truck under it. Next, you want to hammer some rebar into the ground at the base of the two 4x4s that are closer to the camera. The reason for this is that once you have the tripod upright, you don't want the legs to slip out from underneath itself while you're lifting the pumpkin, or while you're lifting the tripod for that matter, because the tripod is pretty heavy as well. You don't want to hammer in the rebar on the far 4x4 yet because you still have to lift it up. Now it's time to lift up the tripod. This is a two person job for us because I physically can't lift it up myself. So we have Dale in the middle. He lifts it up part way and I have my foot on the four by four that's moving just to keep it in place. We don't want to lift it all the way up yet because we have to attach the chain. So here you can see Dale wrapping the chain around all three legs. There's no special way to do it. You just do it whatever way works for you. And we have the grab hook on the one end that links onto the chain. Once the chain is set up, we attach the tractor clevis. From there, we attach the chain hoist to the tractor clevis. The chain for the chain hoist is really long and it touches the ground. So what I do is I have a box that it comes in and I lay the box on the ground underneath it. That way you don't get dirt in it and can cause issues with the chain hoist seizing up or just having issues in general. You want the chain hoist to run smoothly because having a pumpkin suspended in midair with a broken chain hoist is a nightmare. Ask me how I know. Now you just lift the tripod the rest of the way. So Dale does the heavy work and I have my foot on the moving part of the 4x4 to keep it from sliding out from underneath us. There's a lot of reasons I like using sand under my pumpkin. And when it comes to liftoff time, one thing that the sand is really good at is allowing me to dig under the pumpkin a little bit because we have to cinch a rope underneath it. And if you don't have the sand, you're gonna be cinching it right in this area where it's prone to slip because the minute you start lifting the pumpkin, the rope is gonna stretch and it is gonna slide out a little bit. So the, the more you can get it under the pumpkin, the better. I have seen people drop pumpkins before. So I would hate for someone to put all this work into growing a pumpkin and then just drop it because of something so silly like that. So 
I'm gonna go all the way around the pumpkin and just dig under it as much as I can so that we get a nice, good job cinching that rope. Now it's time to set up your lifting straps. I like to space them as evenly apart as possible and avoid any stress areas, for example, the stem. You then tie the rope on the bottom. Everyone has their own knot or hitch that they use. I've actually used square knots fine without any issues. Usually what happens is we'll lift the pumpkin up and it'll stretch out a lot and we'll actually lower it back down and retighten it. Once we're comfortable with how everything looks, we'll lift it up a little bit, double check it one more time, then keep lifting it. I like to look underneath it to make sure there's no critters living underneath it or rotten spots. And I also like to see if it's nice and flat versus concave. Then you can drive the truck or the trailer underneath it. I actually like the trailer better because the trailer's lower to the ground and you don't have to lift the pumpkin as high. It gets pretty sketchy when the pumpkin's really high in the air because just bad things can happen. Now you gotta put everything away until next year. So what we do is we slowly lower the tripod. Once the chain of the chain hoist touches the ground, we make sure we have that box underneath it to keep the dirt from touching it. Then we'll lower it most of the way until we can reach the actual chain hoist. We will remove the chain hoist, we'll remove the chain. Before removing the chain hoist, we'll actually spray it with a little bit of WD-40 or any kind of lubrication or rust prevention just to keep it moving well next year. And then once that's done, you lower it all the way and put everything away for next year.